This video is made possible by PCBWay. PCBWay now offers rapid prototyping manufacturing. They can CNC parts for you, offer sheet metal fabrication, 3D print parts using FDM, SLA and SLS, and injection mold over 100 different materials. Learn more about their manufacturing capabilities in the link below. I really love playing guitar. It really calms me down. What also calms me down is making PCBs. And why am I doing this? And for those who know me, I like to touch stuff. Let me rephrase that. I like things that work on touch. So I thought I'd combine all of the above and make a tiny little guitar that works on touch. But before I show you how this works, let me show you some sexy build footage. Footage sexy. Now this isn't actually playable, but you can play with it. This PCB uses an AT Tiny 816, running of a 3 volt coin cell, driving a piezo speaker and also has an LED and a button. The button is used to wake up the AT Tiny from deep sleep, so we can go to sleep if there's no touch detected for some time to save battery life. The AT Tiny 816 has 6 self capacitance channels. Ideal for six stringed guitars. Now the problem is that because of its size it's impossible to make each string their own channel because it's impossible to just touch one string at a time. So instead what I did is make each section of three frets their own tone. I used the tones that a normal tuned guitar has, namely E, A, D, G, B, E. But you could make those any tones to get a different tuning. The passive piezo or piezo? Piezo. Piezo is connected to a pin on the AT Tiny that has a 16 bit timer. By changing the timing on that channel, I can create different tones. This is where some math comes in. If we consider the standard tuning, we can make a list of frequencies we want. The low E string has a frequency of 82.41 Hz, the A string 110 Hz, and so on. The frequency of our output is determined by the period of the timer. One cycle of our tone in this case is made up by two equal periods to get a 50% duty cycle square wave. Our timer is set up that each time it overflows it triggers an interrupt routine. In that interrupt routine all we do is switch pin states. Let's take for example our low E string. If we want a frequency of 82 Hz we would have two periods of 6 milliseconds. Where during one period the pin connected to the buzzer is high and during the second period the signal is low. The timer counts up each time the CPU completes a full cycle. Our AT Tiny in this case is configured to run at 3.3 MHz. First we need to set the speed of our timer. The speed of the timer clock is determined by dividing our main clock speed by the timer prescaler. In this case timer A has a prescaler of 2, meaning that it runs at half the speed of our clock. The following equation can be used to determine how many seconds it would take to overflow our timer and restart counting. But we already know the time we want. So rewriting the equation a bit gives us this. Where the TCA period is in ticks, the timer interrupt in seconds, our clock speed in hertz and our prescaler is 2. 
if we fill in the numbers, we get 0 0.006 times 3,333,333 divided by 2 minus 1 equals about 10,000 ticks. So after 10,000 ticks, we want to reset our counter, switch the pin state and restart counting. This function does that for every string where there is a touch detected. When a touch is no longer detected, it sets the enable bit of the timer to zero to stop the timer, thus stopping the timer interrupt from triggering, and also sets the pin to the buzzer low to be sure all sound stops. If after a certain time there is no touch detected, the ATtiny goes to sleep. It periodically checks for an interrupt on a button and if so, wakes up. And in the final version of the software, uh, let me first wake it up. The clock is not divided by 6 to get 3.3 MHz, but it's just running at its maximum speed. And that's because an 82 Hz through this tiny little speaker doesn't sound really good. So the tones are still proportional to each other except they're a little bit higher and this is how it sounds now wake up again and one thing to note is the name it is a genderless watch and that's a pun on Fender and a Les Paul. But I now realize that if you pronounce that quickly, it says genderless watts. And that's not quite what I meant, but well, can't change it now. Oh, and also the style of the guitar. The body is more like a Fender and the neck and the headstock is more like a Les Paul. So it's a combination of both. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, well you know what to do, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.